Yeah, um, so I'm Harishwa. Uh, I will be your instructor for the day uh, for this uh, Sumologic fundamentals, uh, fundamental certification class. So uh, I work as a customer success engineer with uh, Sumologic's uh, customer success division, and uh, we will be going over the contents of this deck today. Um, I'm assisted by Seema uh, and also uh, Michael over here. Um, they will be assisting with the chat questions. Uh, if there are any questions, please post it in the chat so that they will be able to answer it uh, in a timely fashion. Uh, just to make sure that we are able to go through all the contents of the demo, uh, we may not be able to um, answer it all questions over the call, but uh, we can definitely help you towards the end of the call uh, if you have any questions. Uh, okay, let's start off with certification track. So starting off with uh, the course agenda, uh, first we'll go over the uh, Sumo Logics uh, overview a little bit, then a short um, hands-on demo uh, from my side towards monitoring and troubleshooting various issues which we might uh, occur on a daily basis. And then uh, we'll dive into hands-on labs. We have around seven labs uh, which we'll be covering during the session. And uh, after that, uh, we will be uh, dedicating one hour of time towards the certification. Uh, just to make sure that um, I have a good amount of uh, network bandwidth. I'm going to turn off my video for now. So uh, we have a, a rewards program for uh, with Uber Eats. So basically uh, the attendees of this particular session, if they attend the whole session and also pass the uh, certification exam, you can email your certificates to training, uh, training at sumologic.com and you will be getting a $15 Uber Eats voucher. So this is actually applicable only for uh, all countries except for India. So if you have uh, any type of certification which you are attending, uh, this will definitely help you with that. We have a total of six certification tracks today. And if you are able to complete all the six certification tracks, you will get a backpack as a added uh, gift. So once you um, have passed all the certification, you can actually uh, uh, get the link for uh, posting the information and uh, you will be able to get uh, the backpack shipped within five to seven days. Okay, let's start off with the presentation. Second, are you guys able to see my screen? I can. Second. Okay. So let's start off with uh, Sumologic's continuous intelligence platform. So Sumologic's continuous intelligence platform is basically a, a, a multi-tenant cloud-based uh, SaaS service towards uh, hosting your log infrastructure and also performing uh, various types of intelligence which you can apply on your log set. And based on that, uh, you can get multiple benefits out of it. So in a day of a, a typical engineer, what happens is um, you will be able to use or consume the data within Sumologic via three methods. One is using alerts. Um, you can get alerts via emails or uh, even third-party integrations like uh, PagerDuty, Slack, Webhook, uh, any type of Webhook. If you can post that particular message to an HTTP endpoint, uh, Sumologic will be able to do that. And you can get that particular message um, in your, uh, uh, your third-party device or an email. So once we get into alerts, we can find out what are the different types of metrics to identify what's actually going on, how is it actually affecting the business or the operations. And with that, 
in order to find out why it's actually happening we can like uh, we can dive into the logs by do, uh, by using a log search and that's usually how um, the life cycle of a data goes uh, in sumo logic um, for a short demo i would be using the logs from a, a travel company called travel logic so basically this is a website for booking any uh, flights so I can book a flight from Los Angeles to Portland, and I will be able to uh, select the flights and also um, purchase the flight tickets for that. Now, all of a sudden, uh, there is a chance that uh, this particular checkout service might not be working. Um, uh, since uh, this is actually working on a microservices architecture, uh, each and every function on the website is uh, a separate microservice by itself. And due to that, there are multiple release cycles. And uh, when there are multiple release cycles, there is a higher probability towards um, any issues can happen and uh, things might break. And in order to um, check what type of issues uh, we are actually coming across, what we can actually do is uh, probably we can start off with a sample alert, which I can show you. So uh, I'm basically an on-call engineer and uh, during my shift timings, I get a particular alert and that particular alert might look like uh, this. So basically there's an alert uh, with my um, production service and somehow the checkout service is actually affected. And once I get to this particular uh, alert, I need to log into the Simologic platform to find out what type of issue am I facing. So to do that, I would be going into my demo environment. So once I go into my demo environment, this is the type of dashboard which I'll be seeing for the checkout service and various other services which are um, at the, uh, working at the back end of that particular website. And as I can see here, there are around 3,000 uh, 3, errors just in the last 60 minutes. And this is something which I want to uh, uh, drill more on. So what I will do is I'll just click on this so that it gets me a, a better look on what's actually happening. And as I can see here with the bookings, there has been a, a increase in the number of failures uh, in the last hour. And due to that, there has been an uh, uh, issue. And uh, due to that, we are actually facing uh, business revenue loss and also operations team is actually uh, struggling hard to find out what the issue is. And one of the main things with Sumologic is that you will be able to drill into what the underlying query is for each and every panel which you see here. Uh, any type of content which is created on the platform, uh, it is actually uh, built up made of a query and uh, we'll be able to dig into that. So one of the issues which you see here is that uh, I can see that the CPU and the total memory is actually going up really, really high um, during a certain instance. And I would want to find out what the issue is for that. So in order to do that, I can click on this open in search icon or show in metrics icon. And I will be able to find out the different latencies of this particular uh, uh, resource consumption. Now, we also have an option where we will be able to align the number of errors which are actually seeing during this time. So I'm using a log query over here, which targets at just the uh, logs, uh, log set of the checkout logs for that particular environment. And I'm also filtering it on uh, the errors and exception which I'm actually seeing for that particular um, uh, log set. And as I can see here, before this particular issue, there weren't any errors. And after that, there weren't any errors. But I'm able to see around 
220 messages uh, at a specific interval each and every minute almost. And I can see that uh, there were error messages during that time. So the other thing which we can actually do is we can look at all the logs from this particular source category in a new log search. And in order to do that, I'll click on plus icon and click on new. And what I would be doing is I'll select the last 16 minutes, 60 minutes, because that's when I found out issues being seen. I would say source category brought travel checkout because that is the data set which I want to see. And once I do that, I can see that I'm able to um, view thousands of pages of log messages. Now, during a time of an incident, uh, it's definitely advisable to find out the issue in a timely manner because more the time we take to troubleshoot, it definitely uh, impacts our business and the operations. And uh, it's humanly impossible to uh, go through these thousand uh, pages of messages. And in order to uh, comprise these messages into viewable format, what we can actually do is we can use the log reduce functionality of Sumo Logic. And what it does is it groups messages based on the, pa uh, the patterns which it sees in the log messages. So if there are a number of log messages which fall under the same pattern, um, log reduce function, it uh, tries to comprise it into uh, the minimal number of uh, signatures uh, which are seen. So for example, I can see that there are almost 8,000 messages or 10,000 messages with this particular message pattern. So there is a checkout function and the function name is charge. And uh, wherever we see star, it means that there was a variable X uh, in that place. And this is the signature and out of that, we found um, 10,000 uh, messages. Now, these are all errors. And uh, mostly, when we have to find a needle in a haystack, we usually uh, uh, try to filter out the ones which has the least amount of count. So in order to do that, I can sort this count. And I can see that um, there was a deployment which was being made for the checkout version and the version of that was 1.14.10. Now, I know for sure that this is a production environment and there was a development code which was deployed, which is actually causing this issue. And I also see that uh, there were uh, SSL handshakes which were being uh, failed and uh, due to which we were seeing um, uh, the high amount of errors in the um, checkout service. Okay. Now, moving back to the um, Sumologic training track. So, when it comes to the data flow in Sumologic, there are three major steps. One is uh, the data collection. So, we will be setting up collectors at uh, either your on-prem uh, infrastructure or the cloud and making sure that we are able to collect those data. And then the second stage would be, we will be able to search that data and analyze. The third stage would be um, making sure that it helps with your operations. So we can either have dashboard visualizations or else uh, monitors and alerts to make sure that you're, uh, you're notified whenever there is an issue. Um, the next stage would be the different types of collectors in Sumologic. So as you can see from this diagram, there are two types of collectors. One is the install collector, which can um, uh, sit inside your uh, on-prem infrastructure, which can be installed. And the other one is a hosted collector where you don't need to host that uh, collector in your infrastructure. It resides in AWS and it makes sure that it has a cloud connectivity with various cloud resources. It can connect with uh, Microsoft Azure or AWS or GCP to make sure that it's able to get the uh, uh, logs from there, logs and metrics from there. 
Uh, one of the thing is that you can actually host a normal HTTP endpoint so that uh, your CDM providers or uh, providers who need to send the logs to a HTTP endpoint can send their logs directly to Sumologic using a hosted collector. Uh, moving on to the type of data which is being sent. Uh, each and every data which is sent into Sumologic, uh, it actually holds a label called a metadata. So you can label all the uh, data which is coming into your platform using metadata. And uh, the most commonly used uh, tags within uh, Sumologic are underscore collector, source host, source name, source, and source category. Now, uh, the most recommended or the most main metadata which we use is the source category. And uh, the reason why uh, it is uh, extremely useful is because the ability to uh, make a hierarchy with the text string. And uh, for example, if I'm having a lab environment, I'm placing lab, the starting of the string, and then Apache is the vendor and the type of log which I'm collecting from that vendor I can have a hierarchy like this to make sure that my logs are easily accessible and identifiable. Uh, if you are having a production environment, this can be changed like prod, and this can be firewall. And if you are having multiple firewalls in your environment, this can be jumper. So using this particular type of metadata, you will be able to perform a type of uh, uh, source category categorization to easily access the data which you want to access. Okay. Now uh, let's start off with the training environment to make sure that uh, each and every one has access to it so that uh, we can perform the uh, hands-on labs. And uh, for doing that, what we'll actually do is we will be using uh, this particular uh, URL to log in. And uh, I would like each and every one of you to pick a three digit number so that uh, you can use separate logins in this environment. So I will be picking 297. So in order to log into uh, the Sumologic platform, uh, let me log out of here. You can use this link, which is available in the chat window. Service.sumologic.com. And you can use this email address. So instead of the hash, uh, uh, three hash symbols, you can use the uh, three digit number which you took. The password for this is September 2021 exclamation mark with SS capital. And once you do that, you can click on sign in to check if you're able to access this environment. Okay, I'll give one more minute so that uh, we can check if anyone is having issues logging in. If you're having any issues, uh, please drop them in the chat.
The number is any three random numbers that have not been chosen yet. Is anyone else facing any issues? The password is capital S, small e, small p, small t, 2021, exclamation mark. I'll give you one moment because people are picking up the numbers. Awesome. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, the one thing which we want to highlight is that um, we recently revamped our uh, user interface. And because of that, there might be slight changes in what you actually see in the um, hands-on lab docs and also what you actually see in the interface. For example, uh, we used to have um, the save as info share buttons over here uh, in the old UI, but right now it's all concise and actually kept in a, a three dot icon on the right of the screen and we'll be able to access that. So just for your information that if you find anything which is not um, uh, aligning with the images which you actually see in the documentation, uh, please don't be frightened. Uh, it's completely uh, because of the new UI vamp. Okay, let's uh, go to the hands-on lab section. And in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to go to the learn tab in the home page, and we'll have to click on community. So, uh, Harishwar, I think the screen yeah. is not visible. Oh, we are still on yeah. slide thirteen. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we still see your slides. Sorry. Yep. Okay, then no, I believe that. Uh, this old UI uh, slide also was not shared before. Yeah. Yeah, so, now it's up. Yeah. Thanks. So in the old UI, you might find these types of icon below the search query, but it is now comprised and it is uh, inside our drop down menu or a dialogue menu. Um, when we click this three dot icon, we'll be able to see the different features. And in order to access the labs, you would need to go to the home icon, then the learn tab. And under that, we'll need to go into community. So I'd be doing that now. So in the home button, go to learn. If I scroll down, I have this page called community. Here, I would be clicking on uh, trainings and certifications. So I would search for first labs. 
training and certification labs. Once I click that, I can see there is a fundamental certification and the labs icon. You can also go to this particular page using a link, uh, which uh, Seema has shared uh, in the Slack, uh, in the chat message now. Probably give another 30 seconds so that you can access this lab. Okay, cool. Uh, let's move on to lab one. So this particular lab is focused on how we actually view the data which is flowing into Sumologic. Uh, what are the different types of data which is available uh, within Sumologic which is flowing in. So in order to do that, we would know uh, we would need to get into the collection section. So in order to do that, uh, we can go into. Arish, can here. you repeat how to get to that? Because I, the link didn't work for me. I'm logged in, but I think can't get to uh, where you are. Okay, uh, can you click on the link which uh, Seema has shared in the chat? Um, yeah, I tried that and I got a. Uh, it didn't, it didn't. Can you try me. opening that in a, a incognito window if possible? In another window? Yeah, uh, in an incognito window. I'll just keep going, I'll figure it out. Yeah, uh, please do try in a different browser uh, in Chrome if possible. Uh, anyone else facing the same issue? Okay. To uh, find the collection page, we would need to get into manage data and under manage data, there is an option called collection. We can click on that. So once we do that, we will have the collection page. Here we will see all the collectors which are collecting data and sending into Sumo Logic. Uh, the bold highlighted text are the collectors and the ones which are not bold are the sources. And each and every source and collector will have a source category, which basically represents what type of data is coming into the platform. So for example, I'm having AWS observability, ALB slash logs, which means that under my AWS environment, I'm using this log for observability. I have the ALB logs coming in. Now let's do a simple log search. And in order to do that, we'll need to click on the plus new icon and click on log search. Sorry to interrupt, but yep. could you repeat what you said about bold versus non-bold? Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. So the ones that you see here, admin training SIEM, which has a, a arrow mark on the left are actually collectors and the ones which are do not have that particular arrow mark are sources so collector is actually a collection of sources uh, let's just say for example you have a machine uh, uh, you have a server uh, sitting in your uh, web environment and you have multiple files uh, within that and uh, within that machine which you need to collect now you will be installing a installer, uh, install collector software, which is like a Sumologic agent on that machine. And that will be identified as a collector. And if you have multiple files which need to be collected 
in different different paths you can create each uh, one source per path or uh, one source per file so that it can be referenced as a singular source within Soma logic. So basically one machine would be treated as a collector and the multiple types of files which you want to collect as separate sources can be referenced as sources. Perfect, thank you. So let's make a simple log search and in order to do that, let's so, uh, click on plus new and click on log search. And in the lab documentation, if you scroll a little bit down, you'll find the query which can be used for searching. So I'll just copy this and paste it over here, which is star pipe count by source category. Star represents, uh, I want to search all messages and count represents the type of aggregation which I want to do, and I want to aggregate it by source category. Now, um, my log search line can be uh, used in the same line. I can do a var statement all in the same line. And then find it something like this. Or else for easier re uh, readability, what I can do is, can click on shift enter or alt enter to make sure that each and every pipe is being seen in a separate line for uh, better visibility and reading. So uh, for now, we will just use star and count by source category. And I'm just using last 15 minutes and I'm searching. And once I do that, I'm able to find out what are the different types of log sources and what are its uh, source categories, how many number of log messages are uh, coming in for that particular source category. So for example, the SAML uh, source category is having 16 log messages. It's artifactory request uh, source categories are having 157 messages. So once you do that, you can go into this particular page, click on this library folder icon and search for Apache Access. Okay, one second. Sorry, it's meant uh, space access and inside one of this particular uh, folder we will find an apache overview dashboard so library is basically the section where we are able to uh, store all the contents which we create in Sumo logic, it can be dashboards, it can be searches, scheduled searches, uh, saved searches, all this can be uh, saved in the library. So once we search for Apache Access, we will need to click on Apache hyphen overview so that we are able to open this dashboard. Now, this is a dashboard which is already created in Sumo Logic and it is already stored. Uh, the one thing which we would want to uh, see is the app catalog, which is accessible over here. So once we click on the app catalog, we will have access to all the pre-built or ready-made um, contents which are uh, pre-built by Sumo Logic towards various log sources. So for example, I have my uh, Akamai app, which is uh, which shows the different types of dashboard which I can build if I'm importing the Akamai data, my cloud monitor data. So similarly, we have 
um, an app for each and every service or in each and every vendor. So for now, for this particular exercise, I would be searching for Apache. So inside app catalog, we'll need to search for Apache. And we will need to click on this feather icon uh, app for Apache and click on add to library. So we'll click on Apache, click on add to library. Now, if we have to add a particular um, app to the uh, library, we will need to specify how do you uh, want to identify the data which needs to be read by this app. So basically, uh, you will have Apache logs coming in in the collection page and you would want to reference that uh, source category or a type of metadata or a tag uh, for identifying that particular log set so that this app can read. And in order to do that, we have a specific metadata, which is web server underscore system is equal to Apache. So this is not a source category. So this is a custom data filter, which I can use by clicking on this Apache log source, enter a custom data filter. And here I will be pasting this web server underscore system. So since we have um, more than around 80 students in this particular lab, uh, we would want to create the content a little bit uniquely, just to make sure that uh, we are able to uh, create the content for every user. And for that, um, we have this ready-made name, which is Apache. I would want you to include your initials after the underscore. So my name is Harisha Salikumar. So I would just use HS. Uh, you can use a two or three letter initial. And once you do that, you can click on add to library. Yeah. Harisha, I yep. just... I'm here just seeing in the chat, some folks are, if you can slow down just a little bit, I think some folks are getting, you know, a little bit behind. Some folks don't have a two monitor setup, so they're trying to go back and forth between the lab and, and the app, and they're kind of getting a little lost. Okay, no problem. Thanks. Okay. So, okay. So, Let's start off with app catalog. We need to go into app catalog, which is the button over here and search for Apache. And once we search for Apache, we will see this feather icon app for Apache, we can click on it. Yep. And you will see the different types of contents in this particular app if we install this particular app into our library. So let's click on add to library. And let's use a unique three letter initial of our own. And if we go into the lab, we will have the instructions for this. And also, what is the data filter which we want to use for that particular application installation? So I'll copy this web server underscore system, SQL to Apache. 
go back here. And instead of using a source category, I'll be using a custom data filter. Inside the custom data filter, I can mention, paste the text which I copied from the app, from the training page. So basically the difference between the source category and custom data filter is that once we use a source category, um, which is the, inside the collection page, we will find the source category for each and every uh, source, data source which is coming in. And um, this particular source can have multiple metadata fields also. So for example, I'm just uh, seeing the source category over here, but if I click inside, actually I do not have access to it, but um, so I can actually show in a different screen. So if I'm able to go inside this, I have an option to add more fields to my uh, source. So using, the, uh, using one of these fields also, I will be able to uh, install the app. So for example, I can use a custom data filter of namespace is equal to AWS slash application ELB or region is equal to US West hyphen one. So, it is just giving users more and more options of how they want to uh, identify that particular data source. So going back to app catalog. So click on app library, custom data filter, and paste web server underscore system is equal to Apache. And when I click add to library, I have this particular app installed in my personal directory. So under my personal directory, I will have this app and you can click on Apache overview to view that app, which you just now created. So right now you're essentially creating a custom view into the existing data. It, it, we're not connecting new data to the repositories. We're just selecting what we want to see in our own particular view. Yeah, so a... we are referencing the existing data, which is flowing in and uh, it is a pre-built configuration just to make sure that this demo is easier. Um, mm -hmm. In order to set up that data, you can actually find that in, in another certification course, which is the uh, Sumologic Administrator. Um, so uh, it's basically built up like how we actually set up Sumologic uh, would be covered under Sumologic Administrator. And under sure. fundamentals course, uh, we'll be finding out how to use Sumologic. Okay, thank you. So once we have this particular view,
what we can actually do is we can share this particular um, application which we just now created to the entire organization. So what I will do is go back to Apache overview. Here I have Apache underscore HSM, which I just now created. Uh, you would find Apache underscore your initials, which you just now created. And click on the three dots, which are over here and click on share. So once I do that, I will get this particular dialogue of sharing this with specific users or users with specific roles or else uh, to the entire organization. So Ashwar, we, we have a question. Sorry, we have a question in the chat. Can multiple sources have the same custom data filter? Yes, we can. Yeah. Thank you. So under users and roles, I will select your entire organization. And I can specify what top, uh, what type of access which I want to give them. Can they just view or else they can edit the content or manage also. So for now, I will just give us view. Uh, just to repeat, we can click on this app which we just now created, click on the three dots, click on share, and we can select your entire organization here so that everyone in the organization will have access to that particular content. You're going to select the access as edit so that you're providing them edit access. And once we click on share, that content will be shared with everyone in the organization. So that's about it for lab one. Uh, let's jump to lab two. So in order to jump to lab two, I believe that you would have landed on this particular page at start and using the viewing data uh, tutorial for the lab one, you can either access the other labs um, using this particular left-hand column, or else uh, to move on to the next lab, at the bottom of the page, you will see lab to search for log data. So in the similar way, we will be traversing towards this particular uh, labs exercise. And oh no, I'll just click this. Uh, let's start off with a simple search query. So I'm going to copy this command for query. Source category is equal to lab Apache access and get. And I'm going to select the time range as last 16 minutes and not last 15 minutes. So for this, click plus new, log search. Here I will paste the query which I found in the lab documentation and click on minus 15 minutes and select last 60 minutes. So once I do that, I will click on the search icon to perform the search. And I am able to see the log messages which are coming in for this particular source category. Okay. 
let's go back to the log uh, lab documentation. So for basically explaining this command, I am looking at this particular source categories log data and I'm trying to search for this particular keyword, which is get. And when I do that, you can see that all the log messages which are having the keyword get are displayed. And also it highlights the keyword which you are trying to search. So all these messages will have get and we have this get highlighted in yellow. Yes, this is a keyword search. So it can be any uh, keyword. So I can use error if I'm finding any error. So none of my log messages were having the key, uh, keyword error. So for example, I can even search for 404. So it's going to match on the number 404 in uh, any message. I can use follow as another keyword which is found in the messages and it's going to show me follow. Okay. Now, these are all long log messages. Um, reading through the entire message might not uh, provide us valuable results. Uh, the best way to um, make these uh, log messages more useful is by extracting certain information from uh, these log messages. And in order to do that, we have something called a parse. So using parse statements, we will be able to extract certain information from this particular log line, and we will to, uh, we'll be able to display them as separate columns or separate fields. So for example, um, this is a log message. I can see that it starts off with the IP address, and then we have a couple of hyphens. Then inside uh, square braces, we have timestamp, then the method, URL, uh, the HTTP protocol, status code, bytes, etc. Now, we can use parse statement for ex uh, extracting these information and display them as separate fields. And in order to do that, we can use parse selected text uh, icon. So what I will be doing is I will need to select the text which starts with this double quotes and ends with the double quote. So we will be extracting only the information which is available within these two double quotes. Okay. So the fields which we will be extracting are URL, status code, and size. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'll select this text, which is within the double quotes, and uh, it starts with the method of that particular uh, log message, which is get. And I will click on right click and use the option parse selected text. So I repeat, I can highlight this particular text which I want to select which is the text from the start of the double quotes and end of the double quotes. Uh, you might find a different log message on your screen. So this, uh, we can just focus on the double quotes or let's say I'm taking this particular log also, click on this, right click and select parse selected text. 
Now, once I do that, I have this par selected text um, dialog box. And here we will be able to extract different parse fields. And in order to do that, we will need to select a particular text. And once I do that, I will have this yellow color pop-up, which asks me to, to extract this value. And I can click that so that that value gets uh, extracted or passed. So URL, status code, and size. So URL is the portion which is after this get. After the get, there is a space. So I would just highlight this about us. Actually, let's Let's take this. You will see a get keyword, and after that, a path, then HTTP um, protocol, then the uh, status code, then the size, then in another URL. So I'll click on this, our selected text. I will select this particular text. Once I do that, I see this yellow pop-up. So I'll click on extract, click to extract this value, and I will name this field as URL. The other data which I want to extract is the status code. So I will double click on the 200 or whatever status code which you're finding in the log message and click to extract this value. And it converts itself as a star, so it's extracted. So I'm using status underscore code. The third one which I want to use is size and then a referral. So the number following the status code is the size. So double click on it, click to extract this value and use size. When I right click, it's not giving me the option to parse. I'm just getting the standard Chrome right click options. Uh, you mean in the um behind screen in this area yeah okay is there another way to get there or is that the only way um uh, can you try highlighting the text and on that particular text can you uh hover over and right click Yeah, I get copy, copy link to highlight all the standard Chrome, right click, inspect, speech, services. Okay, uh, you're using Chrome, right? Yeah, on a Mac. Okay. Just a touchpad, I don't have a mouse. So I'm doing control click. Um, so can you try two finger click? Okay, yeah, that did it. Thanks. Okay, now you got it? Yeah, that worked. Okay, awesome. Yeah, let's click on pass selected text. So this is the URL. And the status code. The size. And then the referral. So select this and click on, click to extract this value. And the 
to start, I need to copy. I mean, for the floor. So just to repeat, I would copy the text from double quotes. After that, the method, then the URL path, the protocol, status code, and till the referrer. So you would find four double quotes in total, uh, two enclosing the method, URL, and the protocol and after that you will find uh, the status code and the size and followed by will see the referral URL uh, within two codes which is axel.com here. Click on this or select a text. Select this, click on extract this value. URL then after that, I would extract the status code, then the size, then the refer. Uh, is it possible to Once we do that, we can click on submit. And what happens here is in the log search query, it creates a past statement for myself based on the dialogue uh, and the way we extracted the uh, fields within that log search. So once I click on enter, what I'll be seeing is I'm seeing all these uh, messages which are extracted separately and being seen over here. So is it possible your JavaScript is disabled for the page and ad blocker as such? uh i currently do not have any blockers that's sorry that was me uh, I computer earlier i thought maybe his javascript was turned off oh okay yeah the other question is since apache is a relatively normal standard block format are there any existing parse strings that can be applied without having to create them manually yes absolutely so um under manage data collection sorry logs we have something called field extraction rules. Here, um, right now I don't have a ability to add a field extraction rule. I can try and having a different browser. In a different account, I will be able to create that. Data, logs, field extraction rules. And here we have an option called add rule. So you can create a name for this particular uh, field extraction rule. Sample, demo. And you can reference that particular data for which you want to um, extract these uh, values. So let's just say lab Apache access. And what you see over here is a pass template option. Here you will have access to all the types of um, 
pre-built field extraction rules for extracting these uh, past values. So if I click on Apache access logs, I have this ready-made parse regex uh, statement, which can be utilized in my um, uh, search query also. So there are two methods of parsing. One is during the runtime of the search, you can do inline parsing within the query so that these values are extracted. The one other option is uh, which we have is uh, using these field extraction rules. So once you set up these field extraction rules, uh, all these data uh, while they are uh, being searched, it will be auto parsed and it will be visible as these fields on the left. So as you can see, I haven't created a statement for actually uh, uh, in this particular one, I haven't created any statements for um, um, status uh, user agent or web server from all these uh, values, but uh, it is being extracted in the field extraction rules. And based on that, we are able to uh, see the logs. Now, moving on to the lab. So once we create this parse statement, we are able to find that all these values are extracted and uh, we are able to see these uh, fields over here. Now we can actually save this search just to make sure that uh, it is being we don't need to write this query each and every time. And in order to do that, we can click on this three dot icon, click on save as. Here I can give a name for this particular search. So, G status scopes. And I can select my personal directory and save it over here. So once I do that, I can see that uh, my search is actually saved as Apache status codes over here. That brings us to the end of lab two. We can switch to Lab, you know. uh, quick question, please. Yep. So I noticed that you had the word regex on one of the queries. Mm -hmm. um, do you essentially have two parsing methods? One's like a simplified regex and one is full That's right. regex? Yeah. Okay. So okay. Uh, the parse statement for this particular lab we are using it as uh, just parse statement using parse anchors, uh, which means mm -hmm. that it's a very straightforward uh, log format where there are essentially spaces, but uh, we may not run into the same type of log format for all applications. So uh, we can essentially use parse regex so that complicated uh, log lines can be extracted with these. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So in order to perform the next uh, lab, we can go to the lab number three and we will need to add a particular line to the existing query which we have, which is pipe under uh, pipe count by status code. Let's copy this and go over to the lab. Let's alt enter or shift enter and paste this particular statement. I repeat, we will need to copy this particular code from lab three and 
using alt enter we can add a new line and then we can paste this particular code over here and click run and what is being displayed is the different types of status code number of log messages which are pertaining to that particular status code so there are around 20 uh, 23000 log messages for uh, 200 status uh, 983 for 404 status and so on now if you see over here um, this is an aggregated view which means that uh, these are not log uh, raw log messages. We have an aggregated view for this, and currently we are seeing this in a table of format. We have multiple other charting options also. For example, bar chart, column chart, spark line, uh, area chart, pie chart, etc. We can use one of these charting options to uh, perform a chart for that particular and we can perform, uh, we can add this to a dashboard if required. So I have charted this particular data using a bar chart. So for this particular exercise, Let's go back to Tableau view. We will need to modify this particular statement again. So we will need to change the last count statement and also add time slice. So for ease of use, we can copy this particular query from the lab three data page Go back. It's the whole query over here, and press enter. So time slice is basically an operator which can um, aggregate log messages based on the timestamp. So if I'm giving one minute means um, I'm aggregating them by uh, one minute. So at each and every minute, when I'm doing a count by time slice and status code, um, I'm able to see at each and every minute, what were the status code which were being seen, and also how many number of log messages arrived at that particular minute for that particular status code. Excuse me, just quick question. Do we have to start a new query for this from this uh, last um, lab? Uh, it's the, we will need to modify the old query. So we would be needing to add this time slice and one, uh, time slice one M and this count by time slice status code. But for just ease of use, we can directly copy this query, which is over here. Okay, thanks. I fell behind a little bit, so thank you. Yeah. It is just continuation of the same exercise, but uh, it's just split up into different labs. So we can copy this query, paste it over here. Once we see that, we see at every minute, what was the status code which was being seen and how many log messages were seen for that particular minute and that status code. Now this type of tabular view is helpful for a certain extent, but the problem with this is we don't have a matrix of a time slice and status code in a singular tabular format. It is just 18 pages of uh, uh, number of log messages which were found for a particular time slice and a status code. In order to have a better tabular format, what we need to do is transposing the results, which means that I can have a table where 
each and every row represents the time slice and each and every column represents the status code. And using that, we will be shrinking this uh, long table into a shorter one uh, for a better view. And in order to do that, we can copy this query, which contains the transpose statement at the last. And we can copy that. and paste it in the screen. And when we run this query, we had 18 pages before, but now it's just shrunk to three pages. I have my status code as columns and all the time slices within the last 60 minutes are uh, listed minute by minute over here. So with this particular view, it would be uh, easier to find out at which minute, uh, which status code had how many number of log lines. Now using this, we can perform multiple charting options. So Let's go back to this page. And here we have our chart. This might not be uh, clearly visible. So switch to a column chart. So at each and every time slice, we have a number of 200s, which are being seen, 300, 302. Each and every status code is being uh, seen in this particular chart. Now, for having a better view, on the status codes which are having lesser number of uh, count, what I can do is I can click on this 200 and 304 so that the messages which are having, uh, the status code which are having lesser number of count are easily visible. So, why do we reference time slice as underscore time slice and transport? So uh, the time slice, which is over here is an operator which performs the time slice and underscore time slice is basically the output which we get out of that um, transpose operator, which we did. Um, and while we perform transpose rows equal to time slice, it means that we want the rows of that particular chart to be time slices, as you can see over here. And column as status code means we have all these columns as status codes. Can I transpose any value I have passed? Yes, you can. Uh, all that you need to do is perform, um, just mention, which row and which column which you are trying to access. Uh, just make sure that uh, the values which you are parsing are aggregated first, and then the aggregated values alone can be performed as transpose. So if in case I want to transpose by size, what I can do is I can use the count statement to use size instead of status code. And instead of status code in the columns, I can use size. Okay. Now, as I mentioned before, we can actually have this type of view where we can exclude the 200s and 304s from the UI while seeing these messages. But there is also an extra method of making sure that uh, we are discarding these uh, log messages using a var statement. And in order to do that, we have this particular query. And we have this var statement, which mentions if the status code is a 200 or a 304, let's uh, negate it using an exclamation mark, which means that those um, uh, those log messages will be filtered out. So I will copy this particular query. 
and paste it over here. So I'm excluding my 203 of status codes. And when I'm clicking enter, I'm able to see that 203 of four are not available in this particular list for filtering out. So for this, we'll copy this particular query, which has the var statement. Copy, paste it over here. We'll have chart for this. Yeah, so the var statement cannot be entered at the last. So you can either mention it before the transpose or else uh, any, anywhere before the transpose. So for example, if I'm using var statement after the count, it is still a code which is, uh, it is still a status code uh, being aggregated. So I'll just use tabla view and I'm clicking enter. It will still filter out the status code 304 and 200. So basically I can do it before the transpose um, anytime I need. Copy this particular query again and paste. And we have completed lab three. Going on to lab four. So have created a bar chart or a column chart using this and we can actually add this particular panel which we just now created to a dashboard and in order to do that i can click on add to dashboard which is over here click on it and it gives me the uh, add panel to dashboard dialog box so we'll need to click on add to dashboard one step which we need to make sure that is um, we will need to create a dashboard over here. If we want to add this panel to an existing dashboard, if we click on this dashboard star uh, drop down, we'll see all the existing dashboards. But I would like to add this to a fresh dashboard which I want to create. So in order to do that, I'd use Apache status codes. Apache code followed by my initial HSM. So once I do that, I have an option called create new dashboard. So I'll click on this, which means that that dashboard does not exist. And once that is done, I will turn off this radio box, which mentions that create in dashboard new UI. So we have two uh, dashboard frameworks. One is the legacy one and one is the new one. Uh, for this particular exercise, it's better that we use the legacy uh, dashboard framework. So repeat, we will need to click on add to dashboard and we will need to give a unique name to our dashboard. So the unique name format is Apache status code followed by your initials. And we will need to toggle off this create in dashboard UI. 
by default that particular uh, radio button would be turned on you will need to turn it off and once we do that we will need to click on add so once i click on add i see that my new dashboard is being created and i actually see a panel in my new dashboard i can resize this particular screen to make sure that uh, all the lines are much more better visible as the next step to this we will need to create a text panel so what i will actually do is using these three icons for more actions i click on that and select add panel here i will give a title patchy insights you can give uh, any text which you want click on submit Actually, we want to create a text panel. So, change sides. Just type in status code. We can type any uh, text which you want to make sure that the users of this dashboard have a better understanding of what this is about. So, once I do that, I have this new panel text panel created. So one other thing which I can do is I can move these panels in and around this particular dashboard. So try reducing this area Move it around here. So that I can change the layout of the panels in the way I like. One other thing which we can do with these dashboards is switch the uh, or toggle the theme to a dark mode. In order to do that, we can click on more actions again and we can click on toggle theme. So once we do that, we have this in dark mode. So you might see this. Um, pencil icon for this edit button and once you click on that you might see done editing button and in order to move these uh, panels or uh, resize these panels you will need to be in uh, editing mode So previously we saw how to share a particular content to different users. Uh, one other thing which you can do with this particular dashboard is uh, share to multiple users also. So in order to do that, we have the share icon over here. Click on that. And we can see who are all the folks who are having access. This is the account which I'm using. So only I'm having access since I created this dashboard. 
I can select Terra organization. And also, once I share this, I can use this particular URL, which is over here under shareable URL for viewing this dashboard separately in a, uh, probably in a knock monitor or people who are viewing this dashboard, they can use this URL to access the dashboard. So this is, since I'm logged in, I'm able to see this uh, dashboard as it is. So what you can do is you can select your entire organization as view access and click on share. So once you do that, uh, everyone in the organization will have access to this dashboard and you will need to share that URL so that they can access that dashboard. repeat so we can click on the share icon and under see who has access you will see who are all the folks who are having access to this particular data uh, if you just now created the dashboard only your name or the account which you took would be listed over here and once you are shared it uh, to someone else uh, you will see their entries also so you can click on your entire organization over here and click view access and share. And the URL for viewing that particular dashboard is available under shareable URL. Okay. Moving on to the next lab, which is lab five. So we'll need to click on lab five, modify your dashboard. If you have shared a dashboard that is stored in your personal folder, will that dashboard become unavailable uh, to those it was shared when the user is removed or deactivated? Um, yes, um, so there are certain instructions towards um, offboarding a user or deleting a user. And we can actually find the information on uh, deleting a user. So when we delete a user, uh, what happens is we will be able to transfer the contents of that particular user to someone else by deleting a user and transfer content. So by doing that, we'll be able to transfer the contents to someone else. Uh, there is an another option of offboarding a user. Uh, which is like a best practices um, document towards knowing what are the things which are happening uh, or the things to be noted while uh, removing user or offboarding user. So using these two documents, it will definitely help you in finding out what would be the precautions of um, removing a user from the platform.
Okay. Going on to the next lab. Quick question about um, the the screenshot that they have there. Is that what ours should look like? Our, mine is not populated with any data. Is that okay or? Uh, which screenshot? Just that first number one right there. Oh wait, if you go back. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the dashboard which we just now created, and um, this dashboard we will be modifying um, the dashboard which we created using the app catalog. So there are two dashboards which we created in the previous labs. So one is the um, custom dashboard which we built from scratch, and the other dashboard will be uh, under Apache underscore your initials you'll see this Apache overview dashboard. So when you click on that, you will see those dashboard panels. Okay, I think I might have created it incorrectly. I'm gonna to have to go back and redo that one later. Okay. So we will need to get into Apache overview uh, dashboard in the personal folder. And one of the options uh, which we can do is edit the existing dashboard. So uh, what I'll do is click on this particular icon. Give you one second. So under Vista location, we will need to click on this three dot icon and click on edit to see the underlying query for this particular um, panel. So here, if we actually see, uh, we are looking at the Apache access logs and we are extracting certain fields out of them, extracting the source IP method, status code, etc. And we are performing a aggregation operation. And also uh, we are using one of the most important operators in Sumo logic, which is lookup. So lookup basically helps you with uh, finding out the latitude, longitude, country, uh, basically the geolocation information about each and every IP, um, which is found in your logs. So uh, based on the logs which are coming in and using the source IP, we will be able to make a match on um, the city and other geolocation attributes. So once we click on edit for that particular dashboard, which is go to that visitor location panel and uh, towards the right of that particular panel, you will see a three dot. Inside that we'll need to click on edit. And once we do that, we will have this particular screenshot where uh, we are able to see the underlying query of that particular panel. So once we do that, uh, we are actually going to add a var clause, which um, filters on only the information or the log messages which are coming from the United States. And in order to do that, we will need to add a var country underscore name is equal to United States. And the resultant query will be like this. So for now, we'll just copy this particular query. Copy this, go back to the page and we can replace this query. So as you can see, I'm, uh, we have added a var statement which mentions country name is equal to United States. And if we click enter, we will only see the map um, plotting the um, log messages which are coming from the United States and the rest of the world has currently uh, been disabled from this particular view.
So instead of a cluster map, what we can actually use is a heat map also under the visual settings of the chart type. Once I do that, I'll be able to see a heat map of log messages coming from different places, the United States itself. I'm doing cluster. What happens is it clusters all the log messages which are coming from different places. As I zoom this map out, I will be able to uh, aggregate this particular view into areas and locations. So I turn it back to heat map, I'm able to see the heat of log messages from different locations. Can you make the country a drop down box uh, to filter on demand? So there is an option called uh, search template variables. So using that, you will be able to perform that. So template variables. filter with template variables. And this particular documentation will help you with that. So what you will be doing is, um, you'll be creating a parameter for that particular country name uh, using a variable. And uh, you will be referencing that as a drop down box. And you can have a custom list of country names or can uh, get the list of country names using a command. Um, this procedure should help you with um, this particular use case. Okay, moving on to lab five. Okay. So once we have updated the um, panel, what we can actually do is can click on the dashboard. And once we do that, we can see that the uh, heat map has been updated towards only in U United States. And we are only seeing the diagram of the heat messages in the United States. And that's about it for lab five. Moving on to lab six. We have a couple of questions. Apache dashboard is still blank. What should I do? Um, Micah, uh, what type of issue are you facing? Um, I think I missed a lab step possibly when we were adding the dashboard from Apache initially. Oh, okay. I'm trying to go back, that, but I, I didn't see anything that I did wrong. I don't know why it didn't populate my, it's like all, it has all the tiles or whatever, mm -hmm. but nothing in them, you know what I mean? Uh, okay. So, we're able to see all the tiles, but uh, none of the um, panels are populating, is it? I mean, I mean, it's basically like there's no tiles in there, actually. It's like it shows where like placeholders of tiles that could be in there, you know, but there's no actual tiles. Got it. Okay. Uh, so you don't even see these texts like uptime, request per second, vista location. 5XX yeah, design. no, I can't. Okay. I don't see any of those. I, it was from a previous step that I must have messed it up. I mm -hmm. think probably the creative 
dashboard, right? Yeah, so I think it is the, uh, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it is actually in the lab one. Um, All right. The lab one, uh, we actually created a dashboard from the app catalog. So probably if we had my, uh, missed that step, uh, I think um, it's actually affecting this particular lab. So uh, probably for now, uh, you can just follow this uh, particular steps, uh, which you can try it out later. Once you have completed the lab one, that would be- Yeah, easy. makes sense. So we have all these panels. Um, the one option which we just now saw is editing this particular panel, which updates this particular dashboard. The other option which we have is open in search, which means that this underlying query, which we saw in the edit option can be opened as a log search itself. So when we do that, click on open in log search, we can see that um, the underlying query is opened up in a new log search tab. So once we do that, Uh, we can actually create this particular search as an alert. So if I go into top of view, I see that um, I'm having various connections from uh, US and only US. Uh, so the use it, the so the use case is going to be if I find even one log line coming from US, I would want to get alerted. So for that, we will use the same query, but um instead of saving this as a plain search we are going to schedule the search and in order to do that we can click on this three dot icon and click on save as this opens up the um, dialogue for saving a search and in that we will need to click on schedule the search and then we will need to set a run frequency. So repeat, going back to Vista location. I'll just select a random location for this and select schedule the search. The run frequency, I will select it to every 15 minutes. Going back to the alert. So every 15 minutes, I want to look at the last three hours data. And every time the search is complete, I will be sending an email to me. So time range would be last three hours. And send notification is basically a field to specify if you want to get alerted uh, each time the scheduled search is, uh, this particular search is run or just during certain conditions. For example, uh, in the behind, we can see that there are eight results. So when we select send notification every time a search is complete, uh, whether there are results there or not, you will still get a notification. But there's another option, which is if the following condition is met, and we can select that and select greater than is equal to zero which means that if you find any results in the uh, 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 the screen, which is behind, which is uh, we see all these source IP addresses and uh, row and counts. Even if we find one record of an IP address um, or a, one particular log message, which we want to get alerted on. And that is why we are selecting this type of condition. So for this particular lab exercise, we'll just go with send notification when every time a search is complete, it's a plain option. And one thing which we want to do is uh, we would like to change the subject line of the email alert. So I will copy this particular uh, JSON variables which we want to reference there. So go back to location and inside the email subject, 
I would be pasting this particular variable. For the recipients, I would be just using, okay, do not copy my have to use address. So you can actually put in your own mail address over here, which is just small.com. So you can enter your uh, own email address over here and you can click on save. So once you do that, every 15 minutes, this particular search is going to be run and um, it's going to trigger an email to me and uh, it's going to have the information on what search query was run, what are the results which were found for that particular search query and also a histogram chart of um, the log messages uh, inbound. So I repeat, the run frequency needs to be set as every 15 minutes. The time for the range would be last three hours, which means that every 15 minutes, it would be looking at last three hours data. Send notification needs to be every time a search is complete, which means that a notification will be sent every time the search is complete. The other type is email. You can enter the email address of yourself under recipients. And under the email subject, you have customized it using the email subject which was given in the lab document. So one other option which we want to do is uh, include an email result as CSV attachment. If we go over here and click on results, that's CSV attachment. Click this and click on save. We will be able to save this particular search. So now I'll click on save. And every 15 minutes, it's going to trigger an email to me. So in the alert email, which you get, you will have the information on uh, a CSV file, which is containing all the information which you found in the log search results. So after a few minutes, what you can actually do is, you can go inside here and click on edit. And you want to stop this particular message, uh, alert messages being received. it and under edit the schedule you can turn this uh, run frequency to never so that you do not get uh, messages anymore and you can click on update so around uh, three dot icon you can click on edit and then schedule the search and the run frequency can be set as never. Okay, okay that uh, finishes almost all the labs. The last lab is around uh, getting help from different resources of Sumologic. And in order to do that, we can go into help.somologic.com. Click enter. So in order to access the release notes for the different features which are being released in the platform and the collectors, you can click on release notes that uh, takes you to the page of release notes, which has specific notes on collector, 
different types of uh, new releases and features and also the developer related content like API and collector management. If you want to search a particular topic, we can use the search bar for searching any topic. FER can search for that to check how to create a field extraction rule or any type of topic can be searched over here. And for quick tutorials, what you can do is you can go to the home page in the Sumo UI and in this learn tab, if you click that, you will see quick start videos towards how to use Sumo logic and get the best value out of it. You can also find the hands-on lab document, which we just now went through and also the hands-on lab, uh, lab document for the administration uh, certification track. Um, here is a good set of links which might help in uh, various purposes. Cheat sheet, it gives us information on different operators and uh, uh, different types of operators which we can use in query. If you want to create a support or chat with support, you can use ask for support. If you want to get training materials, you can use uh, get training and documentation hub. And to find out what are the different features which are uh, absolutely uh, new and uh, exclusively released, we can select the what's new icon to search for that content. So this basically gives us a good overview of the new release features. And last but not least is the community link. So Sumo Logic user base uses this community page for posting any type of um, uh, questions or doubts. You can create a post and post your questions and you can see if um, one of the user base is uh, getting in touch with you or else one of the Sumo professionals get in touch with you with a suggestion or a consultation. And that's about it. And we are right on time and we have another one hour for the certification track. In order to perform the certification track, we will need you to uh, use your own company login account or else you can um, create a login account for your personal purpose. Um, so, the training account which we just now access, it is better that you sign out and use your own account for the uh, lab exam. So for the certification lab exam, uh, you will only get a certificate copy one uh, when you're using your own company um, login account or else uh, you're using your personal account. That is when you get it. So this particular, uh, how long will we have access to environment that we use for today's lab? I believe that uh, the environment will be accessible till end of month. Uh, after that, the password will get rotated or changed. Um, so you can go into the uh, lab account and uh, you can get the spin. So for the certification track, uh, what happens is uh, you will need to answer 30 questions and you will have 60 minutes to take it. Uh, there is a passing criteria of 75% uh, of score, which is required. Uh, it is a completely open resource exam. So it's more of like an open book. You can go to any type of uh, Sumo articles to make sure that 
you are uh, having the resources to um, pass this particular exam. So in order to take this exam, you can go into your own company uh, login account. So I'll just use this for now. And under the home tab, we have a tab called certification. So we'll need to click on that certification and click on get certified. So once you click on get certified, you will be diverted towards um, another page which has all the certification tracks which are available. So, and for doing that uh, particular exam, you can go into fundamentals. And there's an exam called fundamentals exam. You can pick that. For certification, how can you register using personal email? Okay. Yeah. Um, so you can use, you can Google search for Sumologic sign up. And you can click on this link. You can give your business email. Uh, you may not be able to use your personal email like Yahoo or Gmail, but you can uh, use your personal email to sign up for an account and you can use the deployment region, whichever region which you like. And once you click on the uh, agreement uh, options and you can click on sign up, that will create your account for that. So the fundamentals certification, is it just for this course? That's right. I noticed there were, okay. Yeah, I noticed there were three courses with the word fundamentals. There's the cloud sim fundamentals, observability fundamentals, and there's plain old fundamentals. So that's just for this class. Yeah, it's just uh, okay. fundamentals. And okay. if you click on it, um, you will have self-paced courses and uh, the exam in a couple of other languages, which is I think Japanese okay. and Spanish. Great, thank you. Okay. And that's about it. It's a wrap. Uh, are there any other questions which you want me to answer? Uh, Harishwar? Yeah. Uh, would you like to show if if they click get certified button and if they are bounced back to the home page or their own dashboard uh, they need to follow the steps of uh, verifying their email okay so i just posted those steps in the chat window uh, mm -hmm. maybe you would like to show it on the screen uh sure definitely so thanks So this is my page. I will have this home icon and click on certification button. And I need to click on the get certified uh, button. If in case it's redirecting me to a um, different page than the one which is being seen. If I don't get this particular page, what I need to do is I need to go here and click on help the community. Um, right now it's being used as a different account. Um, let's do one thing. Uh, probably one of the users can share the screen uh, with the issues and uh, we can uh, walk them through what needs to be done? Uh, yeah, Jared, uh, would you like to share your screen and show the error that you're getting? Sure, I can do that. Hold on just a second. Thanks. So, yep. So, I, I first did the, um, can you see my screen? Sorry, first. Yep, we can see it. 
Yes. Um, I first clicked a uh, community, like you said, I, I, I clicked the send email verification. And then when I came to my email, um, I, I found the email and I clicked verify my email. And then I got this verification error. So when I tried to go back and do it again, then I got this toast message saying verification email could not be sent. Okay, uh, can you try uh, logging out and logging back in? Sure. Where do I log out at? <laughs> <laughs> On the uh, bottom left uh, corner. Okay, there it is. Sign out. Okay. Uh, this time it took me to community. Okay. Um, can you log out of this particular page? Uh, click on training analyst 182. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm still signed in. To... Okay. And uh, log out of this page also. Okay. Now we can go back to this page and uh, Refresh. Uh, click on the certification tab. Here and get certified. Okay, cool. Now we have Thank answered. you. Uh, does anyone else have a similar issue or a different issue? Pomin, could you confirm if you? Uh, yeah, I, I just followed the same step and, and got it working. Thanks. Okay, great. Great. So, which certification course do you take? Uh, so, I'll share my screen again. So, you need to click on Get Certified, and we have this page. So we have a section called fundamentals. So we'll need to click on fundamentals. So the first one, which is the self, uh, self-paced self course is uh, whatever we just now went through. So uh, it is having the same contents. So we can directly take the exam. So for taking the exam, you can click on fundamentals exam and you can, uh, pass this particular exam so that you get a training certificate. 